Hey everyone, welcome to Ludic Audio, I'm Max, and today we're going to take a deeper dive into creating your own sample instrument in Contact. So there's a couple things we're going to talk about today. The first is things we need to think about when recording stringed instruments. The second thing we'll do is add a round robin effect in Contact in order to add an extra layer of depth to our instruments. Alright, let's get started. So for our video today, I'm going to be sampling a cheap ukulele. We'll use this to talk about string instruments more broadly, and also give us something to record for the round robin effect. Just so you know, I'm actually a percussionist, not a guitar or ukulele player. I tell you this because you don't always need to know how to play an instrument in order to sample it. So I'm sure as many of you know with stringed instruments, you can have the same note pop up multiple times on the fingerboard. This creates an interesting challenge when sampling though. Which one do you pick, and why? Well, let's take a look at the fingerboard of ukulele real quick. Our lowest note is actually the C on that second string there. So if we were to record every note the instrument could play, obviously we'd start on C, then C sharp, D, D sharp. If we go one fret up from that D sharp, we have E, but that same E can also be played on the open string right above it. So which one do we pick? While theoretically you could just keep going up chromatically on a single string, that E on the fifth fret of the C string is not going to sound as good as the E on the open string. If you can play a note further back on the fingerboard, or on a lower fret number, the better the sound quality is going to be. This goes for all notes in general on stringed instruments when sampling. So let's say we we're going to record every single note on this instrument. Here's where we would put all those notes on the fingerboard. We'd have the C, C sharp, D, D sharp, then move up to the next string, E, F, F sharp, then down to the bottom string, G, G sharp, then all the way up to the top string, A, A sharp, B, C, and then we would just keep going up that top string chromatically until we hit that top note. So now that we have that out of the way, let's start talking about creating that round robin effect. So if you don't know what a round robin is, it basically means that we're going to have multiple samples for a single note. We play a note, it plays our first sample, then whenever we hit that note again, it's going to play a different recording of that same note. Okay, so let's hop into contact. So for our ukulele, I recorded every single note on the instrument two times. So over here on the right, I have two folders with both of our sample sets. One with our A recordings and one with our B recordings of every single note. So just like in the last video, we're just going to take all of our notes in sample set number one and bring them into the sampler. If you don't know how to do that, check out part one of this series. Once we have everything in place from sample set one, we're going to go and click on the group editor. Then from here, we'll hit create empty group. Then you should see another group pop up in the group editor. Make sure edit all groups is disabled. Once we've done all this, we can bring in our samples from sample set two. I like making sure everything's in order a few octaves up before moving the whole thing to its correct position. Once we're done putting those in place, we're going to click on that first group again, which is our first sample set. Then we're going to click on the Group Start Options panel. That will reveal a Group Starts drop-down menu. We'll hit Cycle Round Robin, and then we'll go to the position and make sure it's in number one. You could also hit Cycle Random, which just means whenever you hit a note, it's going to randomly choose between which group it's going to play. Okay, then we're going to click on our second group, and then we're going to do the exact same thing and click on Cycle Round Robin. In our position number, we're going to put it as number two. This will make it so that whenever we hit the note, it'll play group one, then the next time we hit it, group two, and it'll just go back and forth between those two. You should be able to hear two different recordings of the same note. As we're playing, you should be able to see our groups lighting up, showing which sample set it's taking from. Okay, so let's take a listen and see how this effect works. Okay, everyone, thanks for watching, and pretty soon we'll be coming out with part three, where we'll go over how to create velocity layers. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe.